G'day viewers, welcome to some more Cocktails with Angry and today I'm going to address the fact that I happen to have launched this channel in a time where a lot of our resources are somewhat limited if we can't or choose not to leave the house. We've only got a limited number of ingredients to make cocktails with. Someone tells you a fantastic sounding cocktail and you go, I don't have those ingredients and I really want to try that. I'm going to let you in on a secret. There are really only four cocktails. Obviously that's not literally true, but basically the entire oeuvre of cocktails are variations on four key combinations. And once you know that, the power is in your hands and you realise this is about flavour profiles, not about specific components in the cocktail. So when somebody says a particular cocktail recipe and you go, I don't have that, all you need to do is a little bit of research into, well, what's the flavor profile they're talking about and how I can improvise. When I, can, when I say there's like four cocktails, they are basically the old fashioned, which uh, in the past was simply called the cocktail. When people talk cocktails in the 1800s, they really meant this. And this is a spirit, a liquor, if you're from the US, uh, a sweetener and bitters. And a fruit garnish is really nice, a, a lemon peel or orange peel garnish. Now, most often now, when you see an old fashioned, it is going to be whiskey. It wasn't always the case, and you don't have to limit yourself to the case. In different times, a rum old fashioned has been more popular, or even a gin old fashioned. Basically, you can experiment with what you have. You just need the spirit, uh, the sweetener and some bitters. And seriously, if you don't have bitters of any sort, uh, do yourself a favor before we're all completely quarantined and get some. Bitters to a cocktail maker are what spices are to a chef. Not necessarily the main event, but they're an integral part of the overall taste and flavor. You really need to get some bitters and that's going to help you with a lot of cocktails. So besides the old fashioned, there's the sour. One of my favorites, the whiskey sour, and that's just the spirit, uh, a citrus juice, usually lemon juice, and again, a sweetener, sugar or sugar syrup. As an option, egg white, which is actually how I prefer it. Makes it nice and frothy, gives it a really nice consistency. But the core of the sour is a spirit, lemon juice, or even lime juice, and a sweetener. And you can experiment with different fruit juices, with different spirits, and see which you like. Again, the most common sort of sour is the whiskey sour, you make with a range of whiskies, but you can improvise based on what you have. And you can even try balancing. You think, I think this goes with that. Instead of just having one spirit in the sour, maybe if I put this with that, like maybe you don't have lemon juice, or lime juice, but you have a, a fruit flavored liqueur. Well, then you've actually gone into a different territory. One of my favorite cocktails is the sidecar. It's a simple, classic, three component cocktail. It's usually cognac or brandy or something along those lines. A fruit liqueur, most often an orange fruit liqueur, like a uh, Cointreau or Triple Sec, and there's a whole bunch of orange fruit liqueurs and other flavored fruit liqueurs out there, uh, and lemon juice. And it's again, the same deal. There are a lot of things that are like brandy or like uh, cognac, like Armagnac. You can, once again, you look into, well, what is a brandy? What is a cognac? You can go, oh, well, I've got wine and I've got this. May I don't know, maybe I could try with this spirit and this wine to approximate something that's like a cognac. I'll let you, when you start improvising, they're not all gonna be winners. They're really not. But experimentation is part of the fun. But when you have that base, it's the spirit, it's a fruit liqueur, and it's a citrus juice. Uh, that also might sound familiar if you're a margarita fan. That's tequila, Cointreau, and lime juice. Again, you can mix and match these. Try different spirits, try different fruit liqueurs. There's a whole rainbow of fruit liqueurs and try different juices going with it. And if you don't have any fruit liqueurs, yet substitute something, some actual fruit juice or maybe a fruit cordial, 
uh, a little bit of that just for the fruit flavor and adjust the amount of spirit you've got in there to compensate for the fact that the fruit cordial has no alcohol in it. See, it's, it's down to your imagination. Once you know that's the base that so many drinks are built off, a spirit, a fruit, and a fruit juice, you can really start to improvise. And the fourth of the four cocktails that I was talking about, this one follows the pattern of the classic Manhattan or Martini. In its simplest form, that's simply your spirit and vermouth or a fortified wine. And you can put bitters with that. Uh, you can put a little bit of a liqueur in that to customize it as well. But not everyone has vermouth, for instance. That's a fortified wine. Maybe you just have a normal wine. So this is where you might go, well, I'm gonna put a little bit of a normal wine and I'm gonna compensate with another liqueur. Or because fortified wines often have a herbal profile that uh, standard wines don't, maybe you actually wanna garnish something with a little bit of that herbal or fruity flavor. You, again, it's about knowing that the basics are there. It's uh, a spirit, it's uh, a vermouth or a fortified wine or something similar. You might put some bitters in it. You might have a little dash of another liqueur to give it your own spin. But this is what I mean. When you see a cocktail recipe and you go, that sounds great, uh, I don't have those ingredients. Find out what those flavors are. Find out what the base of those drinks are. Find out what the subtleties of that drink are and go, what do I have that could approximate that? Then don't be shy to improvise, experiment. Like I said, in this current environment, you know, a lot of us are gonna be indoors for a while. Perfect time to set up some experiments, try some infusions. I'm going to do some tutorials on how I like to do infusions as this goes by. It's a simple process, but it takes time. So if we want something to amuse ourselves as time goes by, that's a useful thing too. So as I continue with this channel, I think what I'm going to do uh, a lot of the drinks I'll do will be fairly simple. A lot of them won't be. Uh, but when I do something that has potentially uh, difficult or unusual ingredients in it, I'm also going to do a cheat version. Like, okay, if you don't have this, try this. And try to inspire people to uh, experiment and have a bit of fun. Because uh, after all, we're not alcoholics when we're drinking cocktails. We're craftspeople we're mixologists, that's a completely different thing to being alcoholics. I hope you like those ideas. I hope that actually helped you understand about the flavors and how you can substitute if you don't have uh, what is in a recipe. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments. I, I hope you'll subscribe if you're not already. Do the old ring the bell and whatnot so you get notifications. Send me requests for either cocktails you want me to make or uh, questions you want answered in a video because I'm just uh, a home enthusiastic amateur like you are potentially or like you might become if you follow me on this journey. I uh, hope this has been useful to you. I hope you have fun with some experiments and I hope I see you again soon. Bye for now.